HR is a beast. I get it. You have finally made it to the point where you are ready to pursue human resources on your entrepreneurial journey. You're ready to add to your team. And once again, you are embarking upon unfamiliar territory. Don't worry. I understand. I mean, there's tons of questions. There's money questions. There's legal questions. There's can I get sued questions. There's what types of positions questions. There's process questions. There's liability questions. Oh, Oh my. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. Don't worry. I am going to help you understand it and get through it. But first, I want to make sure that we do talk about the top 10 HR mistakes that I see entrepreneurs, especially new ones, make that can get you in a lot of hot water and the fact that you really want to avoid them. So let's dive into what they are so that you can give yourself kind of a gut check. Let's get to work. All right, guys, so let's dive right in to the number 10 human resource mistake that entrepreneurs make, and that is inaccurate or no job descriptions. You know, there's no real state or federal law that requires you to have job descriptions, but they really are critical to set the stage for the future with your employees. Um, they're practical for both uh, legal reasons as well as as a useful communication tools um, and also to kind of set the minimum expectations with your employees. It's also going to be helpful legally in the event that you have to justify in any type of DOL audit um, or any type of accusation or any type of review that your business goes through. It's also going to help justify the employee's exempt status. There is some very specific rules surrounding exemption and non-exemption, meaning um, part-time versus full-time, salaried versus eligible for um, overtime, and your job description is the beginning of that. So it's a huge mistake when you don't take the time to actually put real true job descriptions in place. The number nine human resource mistake entrepreneur makes is having legal versus illegal interview questions. EEOC enforces law that make it illegal to discriminate against certain categories of candidates. And sometimes illegal interview questions means that you cannot ask information in these areas. And there can be a number of different kind of conversational types of questions that go on in an interviewing process that really do exacerbate this mistake. Simple things that you wouldn't even think of. I think most people are aware of asking questions like, oh, are you married? Or, oh, how old are you? But you can ask questions like, oh, what year did you graduate from high school? What high school you'd go to? And the conversation can kind of take you down that path. And by you having the information, even if you don't have any ill will, if a person feels like they didn't get the job because you had a piece of information that could kind of exemplify um, discrimination, they can ultimately go after you for that. So you really want to be careful with the types of questions that are asked in the interviewing process. And I will actually add a link because I do talk about how to hire employees in one of our most recent videos. And I talk about the interviewing process being a step in there and all the things that kind of go into that. And I asked in that video, I'm going to ask in this one as well, do you want me to do a deep dive video on how to properly interview someone? If so, put it down in the comments below and I will happily dive into what all of that means. But let's move on to number eight. The number eight human resource mistake that entrepreneurs make is failing to properly address and document performance problems. I hear it all the time. People complain about employees not doing their work, not showing up for work on time, not doing the right things, um, and they don't really know how to handle it. And so that person can become a cancer. It can become frustrating. It becomes a stressor for the employer. And it's very, very difficult to ultimately terminate someone and in some cases even promote someone when you aren't actually going through a performance review process. And nowadays, feedback for employees is critical in creating a good organizational culture. So you want to make sure that you're not making this mistake and that you have a performance review process in place. The number seven human resource mistake that I see entrepreneurs make all the time is failing to implement a proper termination policy and procedure. You know, it's termination 
is the number one thing that employers are held accountable for when it comes to lawsuits for, from employees um, and claims. You, people think it's for sexual harassment is the top one. People might think discrimination is the top one. Well, actually, some of that stuff never even comes up until an employee is being terminated. And so if you don't have an actual process, policy, and procedure in place that works alongside of that number eight mistake, that performance review and documentation process, it can really make firing an employee very, very difficult. I don't care if you are in an at-will state, which a lot of people will say to me, I'm an at-will state. At-will absolutely means that employees can be hired and fired when they want to, but it doesn't mean that they can't sue you. So there's two different things going on in that perspective. The number six human resource mistake that I see entrepreneurs make is failing to maintain proper authorization records. There is specific rules and, and compliance around how to maintain human resource records. It's very very critical how you actually get authorization to do things like reference checks and drug testing and background checks and credit reports and employment verification and also how you keep these files I see human resource files and clients that are absolutely horrific and things are being filed and kept improperly and in violation and non-compliantly so it's a huge mistake if you're a new entrepreneur and you're growing and you don't really realize that all of these things are important you got this look on your face right now? <laughs> it's okay. Take a deep breath. I know. I got you. Before I continue with the last five mistakes, I just wanted to do a quick check and make sure that you are not tripping out. I got y'all, okay? HR is very highly regulated. It is extremely complex. It's also very complicated, but I am going to get you all the way together. No worries. So from now on, in order to make sure you're getting it together, make sure that you like and subscribe to this channel. We are going to be doing some deep dives into standard HR things and stuff that you can incorporate as a small business owner that I've learned by being an HR specialist, but also being a small business owner just like you. Share this, hit that subscribe button, and let's get back into the last five mistakes that I want to make sure you're not making. The number five human resource mistake that entrepreneurs make is the misclassification of employees. This is really, really a big deal, especially when you are transitioning through the stages of growth from a business perspective, because most of the time when you go from being a solopreneur to kind of managing people, the first person that you might bring on board to your team could very well be an outsourced person or a 1099 independent contractor or a freelancer. And so oftentimes people start there because they think of pay Payroll, they think of payroll taxes, but how you treat that employee, whether they're a 1099, um, really is how they should be classified. And it can cost thousands of dollars in fines and back overtime pay or back taxes when employers are classifying their employees as 1099 independent contractors and they're not treating them that way or they are misclassifying exempt employees um, and non-exempt employees improperly. You can't just decide on your own what you want to give someone because you want to just give them a salary just in case they work overtime. So those are huge mistakes as well. The number four human resource mistake that entrepreneurs make is keeping poor employment records. I've talked about this already. There are numerous federal laws that require you to create and retain certain forms of employment records for certain periods of time. Um, and the I-9 form, for instance, if you have a violation of that, um, you can pay up over $2,000 per infraction. So it's Technology can be critical in this piece, but maintaining proper employment records are critical um, in this avenue. And the number three mistake that I oftentimes see um, small employers make is, let's see here. Offering employee benefits and not ensuring compliance. Um, employee benefits is something that when you get to a phase, you want to offer your employees things like health insurance or COBRA, um, you know, and benefits, dental and vision. Those are all amazing things as an employer that you want to get to that point that you can do. But once you start offering employee benefits, it comes with all kinds of responsibilities and including compliance. There's benefits administration compliance, there's ERISA, there's HIPAA, there's COBRA, there's ACA now, 
and there's FMLA. And so oftentimes we see employers not make the transition to that compliance when they ultimately should. And so it does become a pretty big mistake um, that we see employers make. And then the number two H human resource mistake that we see entrepreneurs make is not having an effective or efficient onboarding or orientation process. And I already talked about this in a different video. Um, and again, I will make sure that the link is in the description. I've already linked to it in this video on the steps to hiring an employee there are so many disadvantages in having a poor employee orientation or onboarding program or at worst no program at all um, your employees will provide bad service they will be what people like to term as bad employees and then they um, and entrepreneurs or small businesses never really look at themselves and say well what did I do to contribute to this behavior but oftentimes I can go back and say the employee wasn't onboarded properly. The employee will be dissatisfied. Your turnover rates could be higher. There's so many things that can negatively impact your business when you don't have the proper onboarding. So that's the number two mistake. And then drum roll, the number one human resource mistake that entrepreneurs make is not updating your employee handbook or not having one at all. Some businesses regard them as a necessary evil, um, but they are much more than that. It, they are a clear articulation of your company's HR policies. It's very difficult to have someone and hold someone accountable for things that you have not explained to them thoroughly. It's a helpful guide, but most impor importantly, it's inconsistency, an inaccurate one. When you do get into employee or if you ever got into employment related litigation, that employee manual becomes the answer to everything. And if it's not accurate, if you don't have one, um, if it's poorly worded, it can really cause major problems. And so one of the first things that you wanna do that I tell my clients all the time, when you are hiring your first employee, you know, there are some very specific things that you wanna do, and one of them is to get your employee, the first thing actually is to create an employee handbook so it's a part of your onboarding process and it can help you get things done. So do you see yourself in any of the things that we just discussed? Have you already made some of those mistakes? Are you already concerned about whether or not you've got the right stuff in place in order to avoid those mistakes? Let me know in the comments below. I would be happy to help you figure it all out. And until next time, my loves, have a wonderful day and I will see you on Friday.